Hi, I'm Alex and I'm the Managing Director at A&M Partners. And today I'm in Lukomir, in beautiful Bosnia and Herzegovina. And what I would like to talk about is a concept that is called... <laughs> Wait, Mish, are you also in Bosnia? Yeah, I, I walked all the way over the mountain just to talk with you about CSDM. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that is really the topic of discussions today. Because CSDM is a very hot topic with a lot of discussions, it provides a standardized approach that we can define our services with in the ServiceNow CMDB. Yeah, however, getting into the topic seems to be a rather tedious task because it's a somewhat complex framework and a lot of opinions, right? Exactly, exactly. Especially on how it's supposed to work. So, isn't that also what we're going to speak about today in this video? Absolutely. I think we're going to cover the fundamental concepts of the CSDM. So the elements that you need to know and understand before even starting a project. Because we have so many opinions, it is important that we speak the same language, right? Exactly, exactly. All right, let's do it. Come with us on CSDM. Why care about CSDM? Well, many businesses, they fail to implement an effective data model for their CMDB that can scale and cover multiple perspectives at the same time. And this is really where CSDM comes in. It provides a standardized, carefully designed approach. And it also ensures that the business can utilize all the ServiceNow applications as intended by design. It avoids a lot of technical depth and perhaps most importantly, it allows the config management process to really connect all the parts of the enterprise in one data model. So let's have a look at an example of this by my colleague Joshua. Many organizations today are now transitioning from a CI-based CMDB to a service-aware CMDB. However, many of them underestimate the need for a framework such as CSDM. This is because the framework helps provide consistent definitions across your enterprise. For example, if you have many different departments defining their own services without a consistent definition across, then they'll each come up with their own specific elements. And later on, when you try to do complex enterprise-wide reporting, the elements will not fit together and you'll not be able to achieve what you're after. For example, many of your service offerings may rely on many different services to be provided to your customer. However, if all of those services are not consistently defined and all meet the same definition, your reporting will fall short. A proper CMDB effectively allows you to drive deep and meaningful reporting. A poor CMDB implementation, on the other hand, typically fails to deliver good reports and thus losing all its value to the business. So we know now why to care about the CSDM. Let's dive deeper, but before doing so, let me ask you one simple question. What is a service? There is no one right answer. I would like just to align our common understanding of the definition of a service. So to give you an answer, I would like to look back into the early days of the platform and especially the ITSM suit. Because the general idea behind ITSM is to manage the day-to-day -day activities of the IT department and the offering it provides to the organization. Meaning on one side you have the user, the consumer of the provided technology requesting these IT services. While on the other hand, you have the IT department consisting of multiple people providing and supporting technological offerings. In ServiceNow terminology, they are typically called fulfillers. So to reiterate, a service consisting of people, process and technology provides offerings to a consumer base. This is not only true for IT, but any department within the organization. Hence why a bit later everyone was talking about enterprise service management. People took ITSM best practices and applied them to any service department within the organization. Fast forward and we find ourselves today with many service management solutions, be it for IT, customer services or human resources. However, there is still one problem to this. We're lacking granularity and transparency. Simply because a service department like IT provides many individual services to various audiences, each with their own technology stack managed by dedicated service owners, operators, suppliers, contractual agreements, etc. 
this is where a CSDM-driven CMDB comes into play. Well, that first part was fun, but now that we're back at the office, let's get down to business. Now that we've aligned our definitions and are aware of just how important the CSDM is, let's take a look at how it works. And for you enterprise architects out there dreading having to learn another data model, don't worry. The CSDM was actually designed with this in mind and allows for a one-to-one -one mapping of most common data models, such as TBM, IT for IT, and Archimate. When we talk about services, we need to think in layers, beginning with the bottommost layer of infrastructure. This alone gives us a CI-aware CMDB. With the rest of the layers considered, we then have the basic ingredients for a comprehensive data model of our organization. For the next layer, let's take a look at application service. The definition from ServiceNow tells us that there are a set of interconnected applications and hosts which are configured to offer a service to the organization. So what does this actually mean practically? If we take a look at our example on the right, we can see we have three application services. We can also see that Exchange Prod UK and Exchange Dev UK are supported by the same infrastructure down towards the bottom of the screen. What this means is that an application service does not need to depend on an unique set of infrastructure. The same set of infrastructure can actually support many different application services. And we can also see to the right, Exchange Prod Asia Pacific is supported solely by its own infrastructure. If we come back to the ServiceNow definition, I want to mention that it can be misleading if misinterpreted. The definition implies that application services, and therefore also service mapping, addresses all service classifications. In truth, we're still in the IT operations space. We're not yet addressing services and service offerings, which are other service classifications that service owners in particular are concerned with. Let's have a look at how they come in. With this diagram on screen, we can see how service and service offerings are related. For example, we have the Confluence Wiki as a service. However, this alone cannot be consumed by our customers. We need to give them options. And so that's where service offerings come into play. Service offerings, because they need to be consumed by our customers, need to be linked to the service catalog so they're made available. Additionally, service offerings are also linked to application services, which we already know are made up of infrastructure. The importance of this relationship is so we can see how, when our infrastructure is affected by the likes of incidents and events, how that affects our commitments, which are related to our service offerings. For example, you can imagine that for the various Confluence portals that we have, we need to maintain a 99.9% .9 availability. However, when we have incidents affecting this, with the relationships we have in place, we can automatically calculate how such events affect our commitments. However, this is not all. We have a need to distinguish between the services that are provided to our technology customers and our business customers. What does this mean? I'll hand it over to my colleague Michelle to explain. Thank you, Josh. Well, the truth is the CMDB still primarily serves the purposes of IT. Simply because IT oftentimes provides technical services in order to provide business services towards our business consumers. So if we go back to the previous example of Josh and an incident affects our uh, infrastructure, well, then we can uh, have different concerns within the organization because on the business side, we are primarily concerned with the commitments that we have towards our business consumers. While within IT, we are more concerned about the commitments we have on our technical services that are underpinning the business services. Like just previously mentioned, the availability of the technical services. So in other words, they address different outcomes. That being said, it's also interesting to understand that business services can be used in different areas. It can be used on one hand for internal IT purposes, providing business services to our employees while we can also use it to describe services that we provide to our customers. Please note here that we have CSM here on our uh, slide, but you can also use ITSM. This entirely depends on the needs of your enterprise. 
Now, before you get started with adopting CSDM, I want to give you one last piece of advice. Consider your organization's priorities as this will define your approach. And by that I mean if, for example, for security reasons you need to have an entire inventory of your IT estate, you of course focus on the two lowest layers first, infrastructure and application services. If, however, you need to ensure the health of a critical business service from end to end, you should only focus on the components which help deliver that service. With all of this being covered, we hope that you've learned a fair degree of information about CSDM. On behalf of me, together with my colleagues Michelle and Joshua, and of course ANRM partners, we would really like to thank you for taking the time to watch our video. And of course, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you so much.